Contra exploded out of a giant alien carcass and onto your NES back in 1988. Developed and published by Konami, Contra for the NES was based on the arcade game of the same name, though it's not a direct port by any means. In an age where it was more than enough just to dump an arcade game onto the NES and call it a day, Konami went the extra mile for the NES version of Contra, adding in several stages and bosses that weren't in the arcade version. The end result is the Contra we all know and love that became the blueprint for any future run-and-gun action game released afterward. It's an all-time classic for sure, but is Contra still worth playing today even with multiple sequels that refined and made the game better. Well, grab your favorite spread gun, because we're about to see if Contra can still dish out the fun and difficulty all these years later. Load the game up and you're instantly tossed into the action, and thankfully it won't take too long to figure out what the hell's going on. You play as either Bill or Lance, depending on the number of players, and it's your job to run to the right and kill anything that's in your path. The B button fires your weapon, and the A button makes your character do that super cool spinning jump thing that only Contra guys can do. Seriously, don't, don't actually try it at home. <laughs> Master the art of jumping and shooting, and you're ready to face anything Contra has to throw at you, which is mostly going to be aliens shooting at you from everywhere on the screen, so you're going to need something a little bit better than that crappy default weapon to shoot back at them. Thankfully, you won't be stuck with that standard gun for too long, as pods will soon start flying onto the screen. Shoot the pods and you get one of several weapon power-ups from it, including machine guns, lasers, and the all-powerful spread shot. Generally, anything's going to be better than your default gun, so don't be afraid to grab the different types of weapons that drop out of the pods, as they all have their own strengths and weaknesses. Though you'll probably just end up sticking to the spread gun because it's so damn fun to use. In fact, all of the shooting in Action Contra is just really fun. It feels great to jump around the screen and shoot stuff, and thanks to the variety in weapons, it never gets old. Thankfully, Contra's stages are just as fun and varied as the action is. Most of the stages are your standard run-and-gun variety, but the game does a great job of mixing stuff up to keep things interesting throughout the entire game. Every stage seems to have its own unique challenge, along with the enemies that populate the stage. For example, Stage 2 has you making your way through an alien base from a completely different perspective. You sit at the bottom of the screen here and have to shoot the various orbs on the doors to blow open the wall and continue on. Other stages have their own sets of traps and hazards to contend with, like this military vehicle from the snow stage that slowly inches toward you with a giant spike shield, as so you have to relentlessly jam on the fire button to take him down before it smashes you into the wall. Or even the flames from this stage that you have to carefully navigate through to avoid being burned to a crisp. It also helps that besides the two base stages, every stage looks completely different, and usually have multiple paths to make your way through. Overall, you won't be seeing the same things over and over much at all in Contra, and it goes a long way in making you want to beat the current stage just to see what crazy stuff's gonna be in the next one. Of course, we can't talk about Contra without mentioning the bosses, and they don't disappoint. While that first stage boss isn't exactly mind-blowing, things start to get a lot more interesting as the game gets going. Most are giant screen-sized monstrosities that'll be hurling multiple things at you to stop your progress. And while you're not going to need any sort of strategy guide on how to beat these guys, their patterns in AI at least make them fun to learn and master as you pelt them over and over with bullets. Sadly, their gargantuan size usually means their mobility is extremely limited, if any. So don't expect anything that does more than just kind of slowly lumber around the screen at you. But Contra isn't really going for multi-stage boss battles here. Instead, it's all about size and spectacle. And at least many of the bosses are still really cool to this day despite their tendency to stay in one place. I still remember the first time Red Falcon scrolled onto the screen in the last stage, since I'm pretty sure I almost pissed myself at the horrible slug thing that was staring me down. Contra's bigger-than-life bosses would continue to be a mainstay of the series for years to come, and it's great that the first game here really nailed what future games would continue to perfect. If there's one thing you could not Contra for, it's the sheer difficulty of the game. No, it's not super cheap or difficult for the sake of being difficult. It's just hard. Really hard. It's so hard that there's not too many people out there that have ever beat it without resorting to using the famed Konami code for those precious extra lives it gives you. By default, the game gives you a few lives and a few continues to make it through the entire game. Use up your continues and it's game over. For most people, they've used up their entire allotment of lives and continues by the end of stage three, and it only gets harder from there. 
The amount of memorization you have to do to make it through the entire game without the Konami code is brutal. It's a really daunting task, and one reason why it took me years to ever beat it without the Konami code is help. Still though, it's incredibly rewarding to make it further than you did last time, and it's always fun to come back a little later after you've cooled down and try again. It's definitely hard, but it's the good kind of hard, if that makes any sense. By now, we all know how this story ends, since Contra has gone on to be an all-time classic NES game that defined an entire genre for years to come. Contra is THE prototypical action game, and it can still be played and enjoyed now just as much as it could in 1988. I mean, who didn't really see that coming? And while I could sit around and gush about why Contra is so great for far longer than most sane people should, its significance to me goes a bit deeper than just being a really great game. Contra was actually the first game I ever bought with my own money that I saved up, which is a fairly big deal for an 8-year-old spending more than 10 bucks on a single purchase. Thankfully, that purchase provided dozens and dozens of hours of hair-pulling tough love over the years, especially when I finally beat it and damn near gave everyone in the house a heart attack as I ran through every room screaming in excitement. And thanks to its co-op gameplay, it even provided some great memories of me and my dad playing together most nights after school. Contra is great on its own, but having those memories attached to it puts it in a place few games will ever get to with me, and that's what makes it so easy for me to recommend it to anyone who wants to play it these days. So grab a copy of Contra and start shooting your way through Red Falcon's armies. It's everything a great action game should be, and as far as I'm concerned, will always be the best.